welcome back to Fairy Hollow. I am an ASMR Whispering Fairy, and I thought tonight we could go through some of the books that I could read in some future videos. Because I live in the United States, I can only read books that are in the public domain. Um, if you've heard of LibriVox, uh, they do a lot of the reading uh, for books in the public domain. There's a lot of law behind that, but we're not going to do that today. So I have my little Kindle here. I know that sometimes tapping on the Kindle can be very nice and relaxing. At some point I can do some inaudible whispering as well. So I have some books up here that are in the public domain that we might be able to read. Um, so I'm going to go to the Kindle. I'm going to go to subcategory. And let's look what we have in literature and fiction first. So we have the Canterville Ghost by Oscar Wilde. We have Grimm's Fairy Tale Stories. Those would always be good options. Let's see what's next. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, the Phantom of the Opera. could read any of the L. Frank Baum books. Um, for those of you that don't know, those would be the Wizard of Oz books, um, which I've always felt were pretty nice to read. It means we could also read some of the Lewis Carroll books, um, Alice in Wonderland. Uh, there's Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Any of the Charles Dickens books, um, some of the Mark Twain books, uh, Jack London, um, any of Shakespeare, although I'm not sure how many people are going to be interested in that, but I also have the complete works of Jules Verne, as well as uh, Shakespeare and all of the Sherlock Holmes. Um, I believe I have some of the Charles Dickens, but I can get any of these on Kindle or iPad. like Anne of Green Gables is also fair game. Treasure Island. Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm. two books of Agatha Christie's in the public domain that we could also read. Um, any of the A. 
Aesop's or Aesop's Fables. It depends. I don't know how. I guess it depends on where you grew up, and that's how you say it. Um, Louisa May Alcott's books. Mystery, thriller, and suspense. Let's see if there's anything good on there. Now, I did notice earlier that most of these books, mystery, thriller, and suspense, are in French, which is a bit of a problem for me. I have not taken French in quite some time. I don't imagine it would be very relaxing for anybody. To listen to me hack up a language that is supposed to be very beautiful. And I would probably make it sound terrible. I don't know what it is with Amazon's list right now and everything being in French. I believe this is the last of the Mohicans, um, but that is in, also in French. Hmm. No, that's just not going to work now, is it? So anyway, we have quite a few books that we can read. Um, but another thing that would be fun... I say it's fun. It's fun for me, and I don't know if it's going to be fun for my 10 subscribers, but... Yes, we're up to 10. I'm very excited about this. I feel like I have 10 little friends now that I didn't have before. So let's try top Kindle books of 2020. Maybe we can go through some of them and I can read what they're about. So we have The Girl Who Lived, a thrilling suspense novel. This is by Christopher Grayson. It says, Ten years ago, four people were brutally murdered. One girl lived. No one believes her story. The police think she's crazy. Her therapist thinks she's suicidal. Everyone else thinks she's a dangerous drunk. They're all right. But did she see the killer? And then it says it's won all of these awards. Best Mystery Thriller ebook of the year. Winner Best Thriller. A lot of these are indie books. Uh, awards. As the anniversary of the murders approaches, Faith Winters is released from the psychiatric hospital and yanked back to the last spot on earth she wants to be, her hometown, where the slayings took place. Racked by the lingering echoes of survivor's guilt, Faith spirals into a black hole of alcoholism and wanton self-destruction. Finding no solace at the bottom of a bottle, Faith decides to track down her sister's killer, only to discover that she's the one being hunted. Sisters, a novel by Kristen Hanna. I've read some of Kristen Hanna's stuff and I really liked it. Um, this one says, No one knows you like your sister. She can make you laugh or break your heart with a single word. And no one writes novels like Kristen Hanna, an author who vividly explores the intricate bonds of family. And as Tammy Hogue said, quote, touches the deepest, most tender corners of our heart. Now in her rich, captivating new book, she creates an indelible portrait of two women, once lost to each other, about to come together in a time of exquisite joy and almost unbearable sadness. 
Sisters by blood, strangers by choice, each stands at a crossroads, ready to confront the betrayals of the past. Megan Dantes is a woman hunted by heartbreak. 25 years ago, she was forced to make a terrible choice, one that cost her everything, including the love of her sister Claire. Now, Megan is a hotshot divorce attorney who doesn't believe in intimacy until she meets the one man who can change her mind. Claire Kavanaugh has fallen in love for the first time in her life. As her wedding day approaches, she prepares to face her harsh, judgmental older sister and their self-absorbed mother. It is the first time that they have been together in more than two decades. Over the course of a hot Pacific Northwest summer, these three women who believe they have nothing in common will try to become what they never were, a family. It almost sounds very sad. The Silent Patient by Alex Nicolaides. If you haven't read this book, you need to read it. It was so good. And here comes the cat. see how this goes. Yeah, you are blocking. <laughs> he has to be in everything. So the silent patient is a shocking psychological thriller of a woman's act of violence against her husband and of the therapist obsessed with uncovering her motive. Alicia Berenson's life is simply I'm sorry, Alicia Berenson's life is seemingly perfect. A famous painter married to an in-demand fashion photographer, she lives in a grand house with big windows overlooking a park in one of London's most desirable areas. One evening, her husband Gabriel returns home late from a fashion shoot, and Alicia shoots him five times in the face and then never speaks another word. Alicia's refusal to talk or give any kind of explanation turns a domestic tragedy to something far grander, a mystery that captures the public imagination and casts Alicia into notoriety. The price of her art skyrockets, and she, the silent patient, is hidden away from the tabloids and spotlight at The Grove, a secure forensic unit in North London. Theo Faber is a criminal psychotherapist who has waited a long time for the opportunity to work with Alicia. His determination to get her to talk and unravel the mystery of why she shot her husband takes him down a twisting path into his own motivation, a search for the truth that threatens to consume him. If you like mystery and thriller, I highly recommend that book. say I'm behind on my reading because I've read a lot. I've read about 34 books already this year. Thank you, COVID. Um, however, I will say that a lot of my um, reading has been books that have been out for quite some time. Um, So I really haven't read many new books. Um, so if any of you have any recommendations, I'm happy to take them. I do watch BookTube every once in a while. Um, but I think with all of the stress that's been going on, I've been focusing more on the ASMR community um, and less on BookTube, although I really do like BookTube.
Six of Crows is on my uh, TBR list for those of you who know that or don't know that's to be read. So I have that downstairs. I have to say I'm a little OCD in my reading. Once I find an author, I like to uh, I like to read all of them in a series. So if I get on a on a tear of an author who has about 27 books, I kind of stay there for a while. Although I have been trying to uh, kind of alternate and go back and forth and not get too stuck on one author. The Watchmaker's Daughter looks like an interesting book. India Steele is desperate. Her father is dead. Her fiancé took her inheritance and no one will employ her, despite years working for her watchmaker father. Indeed, the other London watchmakers seem frightened of her. Lone, poor, and at the end of her tether, India takes employment with the only person who will accept her an enigmatic and mysterious man from America, a man who possesses a strange watch that rejuvenates him when he's ill. Matthew Glass must find a particular watchmaker, but he won't tell India why an old one won't do, nor will he tell her what he does back home and how he can afford to stay in a house in one of London's best streets. So, when she reads about an American outlaw, known as the Dark Rider, arriving in England, she suspects Mr. Glass is the fugitive. When danger comes to their door, she's certain of it. But if she notifies the authorities, she'll find herself unemployed and homeless again, and she will have betrayed the man who saved her. That looks really interesting. And it's in a series, which I think we all know by now where that's going to lead me. have any books that you would recommend for me? I've read quite a few this year and I, I feel like I'm, I've been alternating between Patricia Cornwell and Michael Crichton. And I've read quite a few books that I like um, ad in addition to that, but I got on that kick and I really need to get off of that kick and kind of broaden my horizons a little bit. I will say I'm not a huge fan of nonfiction, um, and part of that is because um, I see a lot of uh, hard things on a daily basis, and uh, I use reading as an escape, um, so I don't necessarily want to read it. escape, um, which is kind of funny because my fairy prince is the exact opposite. Well, I hope you enjoyed this quick video. It's, it's kind of a impromptu. Just kind of see where we go with this and if you can give me some suggestions of books I should read personally, and then maybe some books I should read on the channel. That would be helpful. Otherwise, I'm just going to choose. Um, so I hope this finds you well. I'm hoping this week to be moving to a new Pixie Hollow so that uh, it's a little bit more, I don't know if professional is the word, but a little bit more um, 
aesthetically pleasing. So, but thank you for joining me tonight in the ASMR fairy garden.